Edo, welcome to another edition of the No Choftes podcast. I'm your host, Stel, and my co-host, as ever, is Roy. Hello there. Okay, so, hello. Thank you again. Thank you, Sofian. Thank you, Fofi. Hi, Stel. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation one more time. It's an absolute honor to have two former players of Omonia on our show, and... Uh, you know, it's it's really important for us. You know, uh, this beginning to have players that are humble enough to to be part of the show, and you're helping us and you're showing our support. And uh, thank you so much. We're hey, humble. You. You're welcome, man. So, wow, where, where shall we begin, Roy? Because you know, we've got two cult heroes, two Omonia cult heroes, and and Fofi came on last time, and he spoke about his career and his time at the club and his favourite experiences, and obviously Sofiane is going to be telling us about his. So what's the first thing you want to ask Sofiane, my friend? So uh, basically, Sofiane, I'd I like to start a little bit differently. You know, I, I want to take you back uh, quite a, a few years ago. You know, uh, um, you know, you were uh, um, obviously a, a, a immigrant parents in France you were born and raised in France if I'm not mistaken to immigrant parents from Algeria and I, I, I would like to go back there you know there was a, an influx of uh, a lot of Algerians moving to France in the 20s in the 60s and I would like to ask you when, when did your parents move to France and how was it growing up in France as, a, as a, you know a kid and as a teenager later on and uh, you know how if, if, if you faced any sort of discrimination or racism if you saw football as an escape to all of it, just you know a normal uh, childhood how, how was that you want to take us back because it's interesting for people to get to know you from that sort of story of your life that no, most people don't know all right so, uh, my parents are Algerian, uh, like you said. Uh, I was born and raised in, uh, in France. Uh, my father was already in France, and then they got married with my, uh, my mom, and they moved to France okay. in something like 1980. Okay. Uh, uh, then I was born in uh, 1984. Uh, was it Toulouse? To lose, exactly. you were born? Yes, yes, yes exactly, okay. yes. Uh, well, it was okay. A lot of, uh, lot of uh, immigrant uh, anyway in Algeria, in, uh, in France, France, from Algeria, from Portugal, from Spain, from a lot of from, uh, Maghreb, Africa. Maghreb area, generally. Uh, exactly, from Morocco, Tunisia, from Africa in general, you know. Yes. Uh, you have to know that France... Uh, Maybe it was colonized. A colony. Half, colony. Half of Africa. So, so obviously a lot of African uh, in France. Well, I, I would like to... I didn't suffer about uh, racism, to be, uh, to be honest. Uh, it was good. Of course, in football, you don't feel it. You don't feel it in football as uh, we are. Uh, a lot of Africans, especially in France. So yes. you don't really feel it. Uh, I guess out of football, in the real life, it's a different story. But yes. uh, uh, me, Personally, no, I didn't, didn't. no, I didn't feel it. Uh, well, I had some quality, I had some talent. So Monaco, Monaco came to uh, uh, to see my family, to visit my family. They said that they were interested about uh, signing me, so I went there. Uh, we went to visit Monaco, the facilities, uh, the school, everything. And then I signed there when I was maybe 13 years old or 14 years old. Okay. Uh, uh, the academy there, I stayed maybe six years until the professional. It was a little bit difficult to sign professional there. As of this time, uh, it was when uh, Didi Deschamps was, uh, was the yeah, coach the, there. Yeah, the head coach, yes. Uh, the team was amazing. They reached the final, uh, the Champions League final. It was yeah. uh, it was a great time for me. It was a fantastic experience for me. As at the end, I was uh, 
starting to be with the professionals. So I was training with them. It was completely crazy. I was with uh, Evra, Abidal, uh, Morientes, uh, huge yes. players. But it was a little bit difficult for me to start with them. Okay, so that leads me to my next question. You know, as we said, there was a massive influx of uh, Algerians uh, moving to France, like we said, and not only Algerians, but generally, you know, of people from over the world. And uh, the, you know, just talking about Algerians, they have excelled in all aspects in life, like whether that be science, entertainment, or sports, or medicine. But in football, we have like players up to now, like uh, Nazri and uh, Gulam, and uh, um, the list goes on and on. And there's Zidane, obviously, which you know doesn't need any introduction. So growing up, were any uh, was your role model an Algerian player, or was it someone else? You know, like you know, growing up, were you? Did you have any of these players as a role, role model? Obviously, at an age where maybe the player who was a role model was a little bit older, but, you know. No, uh, when I was young, uh, well, it was the time that uh, France won the, the World Cup in 1998. Okay. Eight, yeah. So Zidane was the top, uh, the top of the world at this time. So, of course, okay. he was my model. I used to love as well uh, Ronaldo, the Brazilian. Okay. He was my two brothers when I was uh, when I was really young. Yes. So you didn't have a, a defender as a role model. It was it was not at all. Not at all. No. You know, when you are young, you like the striker. Yeah, you want to be yeah. defender. <laughs> okay. Okay. But when I start to play, uh, really to play football, and then uh, in Monaco when I was in the academy, I start to like some. Some defender like uh, uh, Rio Ferdinand, like uh, Vidic, like uh, Maldini, like uh, Alessandro Nesta. Okay. These kind of players, they were models for me. Okay, so for, for the beginning, uh, you, you got me covered. I don't know if you want to, if Stel or if you want to jump on at this point, and then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get uh, back on the show, you know. So, Stel? You have got any questions you'd like to ask, uh, Sofia? I've, I've got a few, but I'll let Fofi. Fofi, you got any questions, my friend? Fofi? Okay, actually, I don't have a question, but I would just like to say that um, I'm very glad that today I have the opportunity to, to learn many things about Sofian because uh, I know him as a player, but we never have the, had the chance to really discuss about his, his, uh, his career, you know, and so for me, is uh, I'm I'm too happy to to start to know about his career. I know that he play he had, he was playing pneumonia and have a great career here also in Cyprus. Yeah. So for me, uh, I'm happy to to be part of this, this show tonight. Okay, that's great. So yeah, do you wanna jump on and uh, you know ask Sofian some questions? Yeah, Sofian, it's, it's basically about your time at Monaco. And um, you, you mentioned a lot of players there, and um, you kind of stole my thunder there, but that's okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you were in the, the, the B team prior to, you know, uh, making it, so to speak. So I, th I think, was it uh, Frederic uh, Barilaco was your head coach, is that correct? Yeah, uh, exactly, exactly, yeah. And he was below Deschamps because Deschamps was the number one guy at the time, who, as you quite rightly said, they got to the Champions League final when they lost to, to Porto with that famous... Jose Mourinho team, but when you look at the players that you played alongside, it was it Lucas Bernardi was there, uh, Placil, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Gael Givet, who you also broke into the first team with. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. So what, what was Givet like then? Because I think he's one of the most underrated French players I've seen. Like Alain Roche was fantastic, but Givet was also up there, wasn't he? Well, I, I think he was not really. Uh... You think he was underrated? Or yeah, overrated? I think so. Yeah, underrated. Yeah, underrated. Actually, to be honest, he wasn't underrated as uh, he played for Monaco, then he yeah. played for Marseille, and he was in French national team. Mm. But did he get? He as many, did you think he made them enough appearances as many as he would have wanted? Because in the UK, we we no, know about we we know about European football, but we 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 know about the big names like your. 
Um, yeah. like, you know, Barthez back then, it was Dugari, it was uh, Lizarazu, it was uh, uh, Besai. The yeah. Thing, the thing with uh, Gaël Givet, uh, he was a really tough player. Really tough player. He was a hard worker, but he wasn't so, how can I say, he wasn't so nice to see it, you know, to see him playing. He was not the kind of player who uh, was uh, uh, really good technically and could play easily with a ball in a nice way. You understand what I mean? He was really a tough player with a lot of tackles, with uh, aggressivity. Uh, he was not this kind of player like Sergio Ramos who had this uh, uh, nice uh, body shape and who could uh, play uh, easily uh, uh, from behind, this kind of stuff, you know. That's why probably uh, he was a little bit uh, underrated. But he was, when I was in Monaco, he was one of, of my models. Really, he, uh, he, was, uh, uh, he was so professional, so disciplined, you know, this kind of, uh, this is the kind of uh, professional football player that you want to follow, that you want to take as an example. It's a, it's a fantastic academy, Monaco, because we've seen the likes of Anthony Martial breaking through. We've seen Kylian Mbappé. Um, where where do they find these fantastic players? Because we know about Claire Fontaine. We, that's the famous academy in France. Yeah. But Monaco is is almost like the club version of it, isn't it? You don't see Paris Saint Germain producing wonderful youngsters. You might see Monaco and Lyon and possibly uh, Rennes. Yeah. But Monaco yeah. is the is the one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, um, I believe it's the politic of the clubs as well. Uh, we're going to say that Paris Saint-Germain, they don't have the same politic as Monaco, Lille, Lyon or uh, Rennes. Uh, these kind of teams, uh, they probably, they don't have the budget of Paris Saint-Germain, of course. Paris Saint-Germain, they have one target. The target is Champions League. So they inject some million, you know, to, uh, to reach this, uh, this trophy. Monaco, no, it's not really the same. Uh, they bought, I think they bought uh, Anthony Martial for 5 million euros to Lyon. 5 million euros. And mm. they, they sold it for uh, 80 or 70 million. 80, like that. 80 Mbappé, million, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Kylian Mbappé for nothing. They got Kylian Mbappé from Clairefontaine for zero, and they uh, sold it to uh, 108. 100. Yeah, yeah, 180, something like that. Uh, Rennes, it's the same. They want to build with their academy. Lyon, I think it's the best example in France. Well, uh, they yeah. build the team with, uh, almost with the academy. Mm. Even now, I'm watching now uh, Lyon. They are, they are winning now 3-0 in Strasbourg. Uh, so many, so many players. Uh, the first eleven uh, coming from the academy. Mm. Wow! Well, I think yes. wasn't didn't Thierry Henry break through at Monaco? Wasn't it? Yeah. Turin, uh, Emmanuel Petit, Petit. Turin, David Trezeguet, Emmanuel yeah. Petit. Yes. Yeah. And these, all, these are all big players, and they all went on to, yeah, to yeah, achieve fantastic really things. Big, and big players from Monaco. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, I've got a couple quick questions. Um, if if you're you know if you remember your time at Monaco, if I said to you Arsene Wenger, what are the words that come into your head? Because when he came to England, no one knew who he was. He was in Japan at the time coaching, and he came to England, and people were saying, "Oh, who who is this crazy guy with the big glasses and the hair?" And all of a sudden, he wins the league. He goes the season unbeaten. Okay, he didn't win the Champions League, but. He's, he's a legend, a legend at Monaco, like Glenn Hoddle, because it was Glenn Hoddle that was a, under Arsene Wenger, wasn't he? Uh, I think he is a real legend in, uh, in Arsenal, but not in Monaco. No? Not really in Monaco, no. Oh, okay. Mm. No, no, in Monaco, he's... Um, okay, he was the head coach there, but he didn't make something special. I think he won the title, if I'm um, maybe in 1991. Uh, Maybe, but I'm not sure. But no. he's not, I mean, he's not uh, a legend like he is in Arsenal. You understand what I mean? Uh, but Arsenal today, maybe in France, this is the English team that everybody follow. Everybody mm. follow. Why? Because of Arsene Wenger, you know. It's uh, the French uh, team in the UK. 
Yes. So, of course, obviously, everybody for Lloyd because of uh, Therese, uh, Henri, uh, Vieira, and all the French players that... Uh, Anelka. And, uh, yeah, Anelka that became legend there. Yeah. Uh, that's right. And uh, as for Deschamps, Deschamps did very well at, at Monaco as, as a head coach. He went to Juventus, I think, as a head coach as well. But he, yeah. he coached France to, to the, the World Cup in 2018. And it was a, a very slow start to the competition, wasn't it? It wasn't a great start. I think they drew against Australia. But then he, he brought in uh, Giroud. And Giroud changed the whole dynamic of the team. You saw the best of Pogba. You saw the best of Mbappe. You even saw Dembele playing well, Griezmann. So is this one of Deschamps' uh, best attributes to change the team when they need to? Has, was he always like that? I would say to manage, to manage one group, to manage one, uh, yes, one group, he's very good with that. He's very, obviously, tactically, he's top. He, know, he, know how, he knows how to analyze one, uh, their, his opponent. He knows how to analyze one, um, uh, one system, um, uh, his team. But I believe that he's very good to manage one team and to take the best to every player. And uh, to try to to find uh, uh, the best selection of the players, you know, he can uh, take one player that he's not the best at his position on the French national team. Uh, remember that he didn't take, for example, Benzema, that he was uh, uh, at this time the the best striker, probably the best French striker. But that's and, because uh, there was a problem with him and Valbuena, wasn't there? Valbuena. Yeah, yeah, it was something. Yes, yes, yes. But he, yeah. he made the brave decision to say, right, there's a problem with these two players. I'm not taking them. That's yeah. a brave decision. Yeah, yeah. So he can do that. And then, you know, I'm going to take you, I'm going to give you an example. He took uh, Adil Rami. Adil Rami that was yeah. playing in Marseille, that is not the best central defender. No, it was uh, Umtiti and uh, Haram, yep. and he was uh, after another one, but I don't remember who. And then he took Rami. He could uh, take uh, Laporte, for example, that was in Manchester City, that he was doing very well, uh, or another one that that is much better than uh, than Adil Rami. But it, it, do, Rami. do you think it's, do you think he took Rami because he was dating Pamela Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> Because you know he is good, uh, he can get uh, well. I don't say that he is a bad player. Obviously, of course, he is a good player, and he could help, of course, uh, the French national team. But I mean that there are uh, there are better players at at, uh, at his position. Uh, the thing is, he is. Uh, he, he had a good, man, uh, good mentality, you know, he knows how to support uh, the players. He won't be the guy who, uh, who, uh, who, is, uh, who is not happy or angry because he's on the bench. Uh, he has a good mentality to, good to, make it, to create a great atmosphere. So that's important as well when you, you stay one month in a hotel with, a, with, a, with your national team for the tournament. Brilliant. Well, I've just got one more question about your time at Monaco. Um, Patrice Evra. <laughs> he is probably the funniest footballer I've ever seen. He is absolutely crazy. And I remember watching a video of him. It was before the Chelsea game, the semi-final. He was on the balcony and he was screaming, fuck you, Hassel Bank, just going crazy. <laughs> I need to send you the video. It's on YouTube. He's going crazy. It's like my pussy Lampard. He's crazy. But um, he's one of the funniest people I've ever seen like, on, on Instagram, on, on TV. He's always been like that, hasn't he, Sofian? Uh, not really. Not really. <laughs> okay. No? Well, well, when I, I, I mean, in my time in Monaco, he wasn't like that. Obviously, he was younger and uh, he was just starting uh, football with a professional, with uh, DJ Deschamps. So he wasn't so, uh, so funny. So, I mean, he wasn't playing like that with the videos. Anyway, in my time, he, was, uh, he wasn't this uh, Facebook. He wasn't a social media like Instagram and uh, all this stuff. So uh, it was a different time, of course. Uh, 
he was a good guy, obviously, but he wasn't so funny like like now. Now he's completely crazy. Now. Some video was really crazy about him. He, he turned out to be a very good leader, wasn't he? And I know there was a problem during um, one of the major tournaments with France, but you know he's always got that personality where a lot of people like him. Yeah. It's very difficult it was a leader. Like him, yeah, yeah, he was a real leader. Mm -hmm. But good to have him. Uh, it's good to have someone like that in the team. Uh, he knows how to talk, he knows how to, uh, uh, to when there, there is a bad situation, a bad moment in the game, he's here to take, he's the one who can take his responsibility and, uh, and talk to the player, yeah. Mm, fantastic. Fofi, you got any questions, my friend? Good. Yes, uh, what I wanted to ask uh, Sofia now is, about uh, to talk me a little bit about Didi Deschamps, his, 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 person, his real personality, you know, uh, maybe have the, the opportunity to, to, to talk with him, you know, to, to understand what uh, kind of person uh, it is. Well, uh, as I said, I was talking about uh, with one of my family, I was talking about uh, Didi Deschamps. He told me that I don't like him. I don't like his philosophy. I don't like his, uh, the way how he plays. Maybe he doesn't have the best uh, philosophy. He's quite defensive. He played a lot in, uh, in, uh, in counter-attack. But you have to say that it works. It works. Wherever uh, he goes, he wins. He wins. He was in Monaco. He won. He was in the final Champions League and he won the, he won the cup, I think, with Monaco. He won the title with Marseille. That Marseille, they didn't win the title for maybe 30 years. And he came, he won the title. Uh, yeah. He won for one season in uh, Juventus, uh, but in Serie B, okay, they promote. Uh, you can tell me easy with this, uh, with, the, with the player that he had. And uh, uh, world champion with the national team. So yes. he knows football. He knows football, really. He's good in football. He knows football tactically as a, as he was as a player. When he was a player, he was not the player that, uh, one more time, he was not like uh, Pogba, for example, who could uh, change the game and had uh, uh, really uh, creative uh, skills or things like that. But he was uh, the brain of the, the team. I believe yeah. that as a coach, he's the same. Yes, because, uh, you know, because of this situation uh, with, uh, with Benzema, many people, you know, they, they confuse the, the football between, uh, you know, because now he's doing well. Like you say, whenever he, he was head coach, uh, things were going well. Now he win the, win the World Cup with France and, okay, he's, he's not the person that the people used to like because of the situation now with, the, with Benzema, mm -hmm. all of this stuff. Uh, well, uh, his best answer, he, it's the World Cup. <laughs> he won the World Cup. Of course, I want to see Benzema. I want to see him in national team. But now he's the head coach. So he has uh, the right to choose or not, to choose uh, who, whoever he wants, you know. And now, uh, of course, he was a big... Uh, we had a big... Um, a difficult moment before the World Cup when he said that he will not take Benzema, but at the end he won the World Cup. So yeah, what yes. did you say? So it's mean it's mean a lot. It's mean that uh, it's going is doing good job. You no, know? it's mean that he's doing. Yeah, and the, he the, the selection of the players he bring to the national team. You know, like you say from Adil Adil Rami. You know, uh, and he he managed to to win the World Cup with with these players. Absolutely. This is what I, I, I say previously. He knows how to manage one group, not only one team. It's not about the first 11. One more time, when you are, when you are playing a tournament uh, like the World Cup, you are with the same players, the same guys in one hotel during one month. It's important. You don't see uh, other guys. It's only you and the 23 players, 20, 22 other players. So you have to create one group. You have to create kind of family, you know, so it's very important that every players uh, 
they uh, adapt very well to this group and uh, they like each other. He has to create something and Deshaun is very good uh, for that. So you are speaking as a coach now, huh, Sofian? <laughs> <laughs> I told you previously, man. But, uh, I see football differently now, of course. Yeah. It's another thing. He's a student of the game now. A student. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah, care, sure. I, I care a lot about the team. I care a lot about this atmosphere. I care a lot about uh, one and unique project about the team. It's 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 the base of uh, of you know a football team. You have to create something, and if Perfect. someone is someone is trying to be above the team, above the club, or uh, he has to go out. He has to go out. We have to be all in the same project. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. I I believe too. I believe. I think that, and this is 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 in the is the in the football now. This is is really important. You know. It's really important because uh, create is not easy to create one group. And when you you create one group and you see that uh, the players are all together are are fighting for the same target, and it's very important. It's very easy for for you to achieve your target. Yeah, and this is the most beautiful thing. Imagine when you are a coach and you can uh, manage to uh, to make your player working fighting uh, all together for the same and unique target. This is something crazy. You have 20 players and 20 players, they are fighting, they are working, and they are playing for the same target. And they want to help uh, each other. They are, they are very positive vibes, positive atmosphere, and uh, they all want uh, the same for the team. It's, it's very important. Yeah, it's important. It's important. Yeah, and absolutely. it's not easy to to create this. Yeah, this difficult. balance is very very thin. This yeah. balance is very thin. The psychology balance of one team is very thin. Just a small detail can destroy this uh, this balance. That's why you have to keep uh, keep working on that. Let's say and uh, and uh, keep the the player. Uh, um, let's say, to tell them about the target, to tell them about uh, the communication, to tell them about uh, uh, this positive attitude that they, that they must have in the training or in the game. Many, many small details. I, I suppose it's easier to find the balance than it is to maintain it. Yeah. Yeah. And one more time for me, it's, uh, you know, as a player, uh, I had some coach, they were not so good tactically. They didn't teach me something tactically, but they were so good to manage one group. They were so good to, to, to focus on the, on the team, on the team spirit. They were so good to, in their communication, to talk with the players, to make them uh, feel good, you know, confident, uh, to make them uh, fight, fight for each other that uh, you forget that they are not so good tactically. You understand what I mean? Yeah. It's very important. Or, or today, one coach is not only, uh, one head coach is not only coach. He's manager, you know? He has to yeah. take care of so many things. So that's very important. 100%. So yeah. I, I guess it's going to uh, segue on to Roy's question. I guess you're a, uh, your time at Armoni, your first season at Armoni, well, I think Lavko was in charge, wasn't he? Yeah. So would you say that he was more of a tactician or a man manager? Um, tactician. Yeah. Yes. He's probably one of the best uh, Cypriot coach, I believe. Uh, he knows football. Uh, he knows tactic. And he's very, very professional and disciplined, which is very important, of course, in football and especially in Cyprus. I'm so glad, so glad you said that because I know that he sometimes watches this podcast. So, uh, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> Roy, ask your questions, my friend. Okay, uh, actually, I was going to start a little bit different, but since we're talking about Larko and uh, since you're, you're ha starting this new chapter in your career, I'd like to ask you, uh, ask the same question to uh, Andre Skembri, uh, because he's in a...
to you now is starting a new chapter in your career with coaching. What do you think of Henning uh, so far? Tell me again, sorry. About Henning Berg. What do you think of Henning Berg, Omonia's coach? So, oh. as, as a coach, not as a player, like as a coach now. Uh, I'm really, really... Uh, Well, I have. I, I will say something. Maybe I shouldn't say, but I will say. Uh, I work a little bit with the uh, Larku and Berg. Okay. Uh, so I have the chance, of course, to to talk with them, to talk about their philosophy of uh, their philosophy of the see football, how they want to play, and uh, I will say just that. Uh, I would love to have uh, one coach like him. Okay, so that's great. Uh, okay, so now let's just uh, go to your time uh, in Omonia. I think it was 2011 when you first came to Cyprus and initially uh, you came here for Hermes Aradipu, if I'm not mistaken. Something didn't work out. You were On a, on a trial to Apollon before you ended up in Omonia. Do you want to give us your version of the story? Is that how things oh, happen? No. Okay, it wasn't really like that. Uh, Apollon? So, the, yeah, you tell, tell me your version of the story. Tell me. Um, And how did, you, how, how, how did you end up in Cyprus? I mean, you were in France and then, you know, what was the story? You tell us your version. Okay. Uh, I was... I remember I was in a holiday close to Marseille uh, and one manager called me. I didn't know him. Okay. Uh, he told me uh, if I was free, I called him, yes. I was going to sign for uh, Rennes at this time. I was close to sign with, uh, with Rennes, but I, I used to play before in Rennes and I was going uh, back to sign for Rennes. Uh, and then he told me, um, maybe I have a team for you or something like that. I said, okay, which team? And he told me, in Cyprus. I said, oh, you play football in Cyprus. <laughs> 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 Show me where is Cyprus. Well, to be honest, I have to be honest, I didn't know about Cyprus. I didn't know about uh, Cypriot football. And he told me about this uh, enemies that I didn't know at all. To be honest, at this time, I didn't know even Omonia or Apoel or nothing, really. Okay. Fair enough. No. Yeah. So I came to uh, Cyprus. I remember that I met uh, Mr. Faneros yeah. and I went to see the facilities of Hermes and the next day I went back to France. Ah, okay. Okay, because uh, he was... He was... Uh, I won't shocking. Care. It was shocking oh. to you. Yeah. Uh, you, you, <laughs> said, you said no to him? <laughs> you say, and, and you're still alive? <laughs> I, I didn't say no to him. I you said maybe. I, I, will, I will think about it. <laughs> and then the next day I was in the plane. <laughs> and then I didn't want to hear, uh, to hear any more about Cyprus, to be honest. Uh, I didn't expect it, but anyway, it was a nice experience. Uh, and then I went back to, to, to France and this, the same manager, he called me one month ago and he told me, uh, listen, uh, I told him, no, I will not listen. <laughs> okay. uh, if it's about Cyprus, I don't want to hear nothing about Cyprus. And then he told me, no, it's another story. It's with another team. It's with a big team and this and that. He drove me crazy, to be honest. I didn't want to come, to be honest, at the beginning. Really, I didn't want to come. And then he told me, Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. Look how I came. Uh, he told me, listen, uh, I will send you the ticket. You will come for three, four days. You will come, you will visit the facilities. Uh, you will see the team, the stadium, everything. If you like it, you sign. If you don't like it, three, four days holiday, three, four days holidays in Cyprus. Yeah, okay. nice. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Okay, I'm coming. I said, and then he sent me the ticket. The next day, I was again uh, in the plane to come in Cyprus, and then it was uh, another story. Okay. I, th so, I think Fofi only came for three or four days, but he decided I'm staying forever. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's it's crazy but i think uh, many players that played before in cyprus they they're going to miss cyprus they will always like to come back you know is a absolutely a country that uh, absolutely it's it's nice it's nice country you know whenever you come here uh, you go back you want to come back again look bro i'm going to tell you something I played for so many teams in so many countries, uh, but I remember when I left, definitely Omonia, and then after I, I, I played for Greece, in Italy, in Algeria, in France, everywhere. But I signed for Alki. I was at the end of my career, of my football career. I was maybe 34, 35, something like that. He was, I never was so happy to sign for a team. Okay. The Alki, not because of Alki obviously, but just because I was back in Cyprus. Okay. I was so happy to be back in Cyprus. Really, <laughs> I missed so much Cyprus. Really, and then when I came back, I missed so much that I say, "Okay, I will not leave again. I will stay here." <laughs> <laughs> so here I am. Okay, uh, so first year, Omonia, you won the cup against Tael. Uh, I think it was Alves uh, who scored the decider. It was a 1-0 win. Uh, was that the game that's going to stay with you forever? Is that yeah, your favorite game at Omonia? Or, you know, generally talk us, t- tell us a little bit more about that year, that, that first year, your experiences at Omonia, how you how obviously you, you just mentioned that you know you didn't have the best first impression of Cyprus, but then you know you started playing for Omonia. Did that change everything, your perspective? And generally about that year, how was that year for you? Uh, look, when I came to visit the facilities, I remember they had good facilities at this time, Omonia. But I remember that when I came the next day. I think they had a friendly game against one team, uh, Italian team from Serie A okay. in Gassipi. Okay. I don't remember which team. Okay. And uh, I went to watch this game, of course. And at this time, I say, I want to sign. Okay. Gassipi was full. The fans was absolutely uh, crazy. The gate nine was uh, unbelievable. And I say at this time, I want to sign. And then the next day I signed. Okay. And, and what about the rest of the year? You know, so the year started, it ended yeah. with us winning the title, the cup final. But how do you remember the rest of the year? I mean, the I league. Mean, firstly, uh, it was uh, the European uh, qualification. No. Yeah. We, we, we played against Abu Den Haag, Gassipi. We won 3 0. It was amazing. Uh, then uh, we lost uh, there, maybe 1-0, but we passed. Uh, yeah. And then we played against Salzburg. Uh, yeah. Red Salzburg. We won in Gassipi 2-1. One. And we lost uh, there 1-0. Mm-hmm. So for yeah. one group, we didn't pass to the group. It was very, very, uh, very, very sad. We were very, very disappointed. But it was my first impression, my first memories, you know, in Ammonia, during my time in Ammonia. It was a great time because it was my first games with Ammonia. My first games with Ammonia was uh, uh, Salzburg. It was, I think, Super Cup as well with Apoel. And yeah. we, we lost, I think. We and lost. I, had, I had a great chance uh, on the corner. I put a uh, yeah. head to the post. Yeah. Um, well, it was my first, uh, my first uh, games. Uh, yeah. uh, I remember that it's probably in 2011, 2012, when we won the cup, it's probably the best uh, team uh, that I ever played. We had an amazing yeah. team. Amazing team. And, uh, okay, so at that time, uh, how was how was the atmosphere like in the in the dressing room? Uh, as you mentioned, we had some very good quality players at the time. I remember you being, uh, you know, 
really into the team. And uh, I think we had Bergugno and Scaramoncino. And, well, they came after. Uh, yeah, no. they came after. But, uh, you know, how, how was the relationship between you guys as players? You know, now as, as, as a manager, you, as a coach, you know, you always say how important it is for the dressing room to be aligned, for the players to be a family and all of that. How was your time at Romonia and the relationship between you and the other players? Uh, you know, maybe you can tell us some stories we don't know. For example, the final. When we won the final, you know, did you party with people? Who was your roommate at the time? Who was your best friend? How was the relationship with all the players? You know, obviously from many different countries we had players. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. One, one, one second, one second, Roy. Yeah. If you remember the interview with Timo Wenzel, he said that all the parties were at Bruno Aguiar's house. Yeah. So I'm kind of expecting someone to be in a, in a swimming pool with all their yeah. clothes on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Bruno. <laughs> we had a fantastic player who made uh, the atmos great, the atmosphere. And he was my roommate at this time. It was Freddy. Freddy, yeah. Uh. <laughs> One of the most funny guys. Oh, he's uh, laughing, huh? I, I, yeah. I, I met in football. One of the funniest guys, really. He was unbelievable. Unbelievable. He was so funny. Really so funny. And by the way, he was a good player because I think at this time he be, he was the top scorer, oh, I think. Yeah, top yeah. scorer. Yeah. Yes, I remember that time. Yeah, he scored some nice goals, uh, even in Europa League. In, uh, yeah. Fofi, did you, Fofi, did you ever play with uh, Freddy together? Because I think when he first came, he came for Doxa and then he went to... Uh, he, he, yes, Sonia. unfortunately, I, we never played together. But uh, the year that I was in Doxa, my first year in Doxa, yes, I... It was in Omonia at that time. Okay, it was uh, going at the, so at the end of his career, but... Together. Yeah, but he was a fantastic striker. He was a he was a, a great player, a great player. Yeah, that time. And fantastic guy. Yeah, very, yeah. Very good guy. Very very funny. It's a, a a top player for a team. He's a team player, you know. Um, he has good mentality. He's a fighter, and he's really great guy. He's so funny, so funny. It's good to have this kind of guy in one group. <laughs> Okay, that's sure. great. So maybe we can have the opportunity to have Freddie on the show and then maybe we, you, you can jump on as well, you know, and... Uh, yeah. you know. Well, the thing is, that when I, I, I hear stories from former footballers in, in England, then their stories are usually like, oh, when, when we went to pre-season, we ended up in this restaurant and then we got drunk and then someone fell out the window or someone <laughs> fell in the swimming pool, you know? But I can't, I can't imagine that happening in Cyprus because a lot of the, the non-Cypriot players, they're, they're, they're not like the British players. They're, they're yeah. more, yeah, do you know what I mean? So when you tell me that Freddie's funny, I'm thinking, I can't imagine Freddie getting a fire extinguisher in a hotel and spraying people like Stan <laughs> Cole <Collingwood. laughs> Well, the thing is, uh, Cyprus, Cyprus is a small sp- uh, place, you know? So it's quite difficult. And I, 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 on my time, in my time in Omonia, Omonia used to take uh, all the best Cypriot players. Yeah. So I remember that I was playing, for example, uh, with the Stathis, Aroneftis, with the uh, Kocho Makridis, with uh, Avram, uh, with um, uh, Dimitri Fristofi. Uh, sorry? Elias Karalambus, was he? Elias Karalambus, he, he left. When I signed, he left. Oh, him okay. and Okas. Him, Okas, and, uh, and another one, but I don't remember. Uh, the striker? The striker, yes. Constantino. Uh, Constantino. Charis yeah. Constantino. Charis Constantino. Yeah. Yeah. When I signed, they left uh, this player. So it was, at this time, Omonia was, let's say, the team of the, of the people, you know, the Cypriots. Uh, all the best Cypriot players they were playing for uh, for Omonia at this time, so it was a little bit difficult, you know, to have this kind of of stories. As I told you, uh, it was Jurgos Efrem as well. I forgot him, but yeah. uh, one we're of trying the... to forget him as well. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to forget him as well, Sofian. <laughs> well, he was not the only one. Uh... I'm joking. Come on, oh, come on, Royce, Royce. 
They have no. I, 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 I'm going to put my my microphone on mute, man. On this. 